Welcome back to Book View Now at the Miami Book Fair. I'm Jeffrey Brown from the PBS NewsHour, and I'm joined now by Will Haygood. He's the author of a new biography of Thurgood Marshall, Showdown. Welcome to you. Thank you. Thurgood Marshall becoming the first black Supreme Court Justice, a story that is known and not so well known. That's what I found interesting. You're exactly right. Yeah. And that's why I wanted to focus on his Supreme Court confirmation hearings, because I thought it was a a genuine drama. Most people who've written about Thurgood Marshall, I think because his accession to the Supreme Court was so historic that they uh, have felt a need to focus on those years on the court. Mm -hmm. But his five days of confirmation hearings in room 2228 in the U.S. Senate were very historic and it was a battle between Marshall and these powerful Southern Senators who did not want him to make it to the bench. Yeah, the, it's a history that is um very much part of our history, but perhaps not so well remembered. The people he was up against and the, the very strong characters, cast of characters you're dealing with, right? Yes. Uh, there was James Eastland of Mississippi, John McClellan of Arkansas, Sam Irvin of North Carolina, later made famous during the Watergate hearings, yep. and uh, Strom, Strom Thurmond, Thurmond. Uh, yeah. South Carolina. So Marshall, in his Supreme Court victories throughout the South for the NAACP, uh, he had changed the landscape as far as voting rights, housing rights, job discrimination, lawsuits. He had won those, and those had upset these powerful men in the Senate who were going to be sitting in judgment of him. And so, I mean, and of course, his titanic victory, the 1954 Brown v. Right. Board of Education, which up ended separate but equal. So Marshall really changed the entire landscape of the American South. And you can imagine that these Southern senators uh, didn't like him for various reasons. And it took a Southern president, Lyndon Johnson, to nominate him. Yes, so I wanted to get to him because he is the other very, very big personality in the room, right? In the yes. story. Yeah. Yes. He wanted to, I mean, it was important to him to nominate Thurgood Marshall. Yes, I think Lyndon Johnson, not being a lawyer, so did not look at, you know, uh, laws or big social movements in the sense of figuring, I may lose. I think mm -hmm. he went from the gut and passion. So he got the 1964 Civil Rights Act passed, then the 1965 Voting Rights Act passed, and he said to himself that the third wheel or the third nail in the coffin of white supremacy is mm -hmm. going to be my effort to put an accomplished African-American on the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. Marshall graduated number one in his law school class at Howard University, took 32 cases before the Supreme Court, won 29 of them. So he really was a legal giant yeah. and had all of the qualifications to be on the Supreme Court. What about the relationship between the two, Marshall and Johnson? Both large personalities, large men, yep. right? Yep, six feet, four inches tall. Yeah. I think they had a mutual bond toward each other. Uh, Marshall uh, spent a lot of time in Texas in the mid-1940s fighting a case called Smith v. Allwright, which mm -hmm. desegregated the all-white Democratic primary throughout the South. Mm -hmm. And Lyndon Johnson, running for the Senate, started to win and win and win. He gained seniority uh, with the help of these blacks that Thurgood Marshall had freed to vote. So you really can't argue no Thurgood Marshall, no Lyndon Johnson. Mm. So I think by 1967, that President Johnson uh, felt he, he had a debt mm -hmm. uh, unto Thurgood Marshall. And what was their relationship like? Very close, very cordial, very warm. Uh, there's a great scene in the book uh, where Lyndon Johnson, after he's out of the White House, he's on his ranch in Texas. Uh, he's no longer the president. Calls Thurgood Marshall and says, I'm thinking about writing a book about the confirmation battle mm -hmm. that you and I had to go through. He said, because you caused me a lot of hell. It was hell getting you onto that bench. Mm -hmm. And Thurgood Marshall said, well, Mr. President, anything I can do to help you, I will. Mm -hmm. and Lyndon Johnson died a short while later. Uh, and so here I am, years later, yeah. 
someone born in the year 1954, as I was, the year of Brown, yeah. you know, it was just very poignant for me as an American to write this book because I felt that it's a debt to, to Thurgood Marshall and to President Johnson mm -hmm. and all those people who believed in righteousness in this country. Confirmation hearings became, in later years, real theater, right? Right. And very filled with animosity and, uh, of course, with the Bork, with uh, Robert Bork and then afterwards. Yep. This was an earlier period where it was more typical that the Senate would give, uh, well, would sort of let the president do, in most cases, what he, he wanted. Right, right. You're exactly right. Yeah. I mean, uh, no Supreme Court hearing before Thurgood Marshall had lasted uh, more than a day. They all had lasted less than a day. Less than a day, yeah. all of them. All I of them. I didn't realize it was that, yeah. that quick. For yeah. every yeah. nominee before yeah. Thurgood Marshall. But Marshall comes along and his hearings stretch into five days. And President Johnson was so nervous that on the end of the second day, and now, now this is something that they had never seen yeah. in the White House, in nominees hearings stretching this long. At the end of the second day, President Johnson summoned William Coleman, who was also a very well accomplished African American lawyer, to the White House and said, Look, if my man Thurgood Marshall doesn't make it, I'm going to nominate you because I'm going to integrate the U.S. Supreme Court. Now, <laughs> that, I think that so he was really worried. explains yeah. how nervous and worried the White House was. And how did they end up getting the votes? How did they end up winning? Yeah, well, yes, it was 69-11, which sounds like a wide swath right. of comfort, but it really wasn't because the Southerners had stopped the White House nine votes short. If the White House had gotten, say, 59, uh, 60 votes, then that would have been enough for the Southern Democrats to filibuster, mm -hmm. and they would have filibustered the nomination to, to death. It was President Johnson who was able to convince 20 Southern senators not to vote on the nomination, which was astonishing. And he had his ways of convincing, right? Yes, he was, <laughs> he was a master of the Senate. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. and he called and, and talked to him in very blunt language. Mm -hmm. I need you to step down tomorrow on on this Thurgood Marshall vote. Yeah. Don't show up. Let me just ask you finally, you focused on this confirmation hearing, but you had to look at the whole uh, biography of Thurgood Marshall. Yes. What was, where did his ambition come from, his drive to do all he did because he accomplished so much, as you said, even before becoming a Supreme Court Justice? Yeah. M Marshall, when he was 15 years old, he fell in love. And it was like a all-consuming love affair. And he knew it would never be vanquished. And he fell in love with the U.S. Constitution. You know, it's just six pages. He made a copy of the document and put it in his vest pocket. And so he would go, after he became a lawyer, in front of these state judges and federal judges, and, and he would all but say, you cannot break the laws of the Constitution. You cannot break the hmm. intent of the U.S. Constitution. It's wrong, and you're violating the rights of people. He used it, he used the Constitution itself. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that's how much he loved his country. You know, he said, this is a sacred document, and yet people are being denied their job rights or their voting rights, and, and it's not fair. So to have that vision and to stick with it, it's just amazing. And he did it decade after decade after decade until he was taken off the road by President Kennedy and made a federal appeals court mm -hmm. judge, and then a solicitor general, mm -hmm. and then his and nomination then, to the and court. And then making history. Right, he made history. More history, I guess, yes. in his case. Yes. All right, the new book is Showdown. Will Haygood, thank you so much. Thank you, great to be here.